Hi there, guys and gals. Welcome back to the Den of Tools. Today we're talking about, yep, we're talking about zero turn mowers. And the reason is in the live stream on Sunday, and I know you're all in the live stream on Sunday, right? Check us out every Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific. So one of the questions that popped up was, could you recommend a good entry level zero turn mower? And I'll be honest, it stunned all of us because I think for most of us, the idea of entry level and zero turn mower kind of were mutually exclusive. But you know what? The more we looked at it, we thought, you know what? This is a good question. We need to figure this one out. So we had a powwow. We went over to Mater's, uh, Mater's workshop. I'll put a link to his channel down below. We did a live stream on Monday. Had a bunch of guys who work on these things, uh, who some of the guys who have them, and had a conversation about what are the good, what are the right ones to look at? What are the engines to look at? Uh, what are the categories to look at? And basically what we came at it, at it is, that we're looking at national brands. There's a bunch of regional uh, manufacturers out there, but uh, it's hard to recommend one that's only available in like one state or half of one state or this area, that area. So we're, we're talking about national retailers and national brands here, okay? Uh, because honestly, I think the idea of a, a, a good entry level zero rear turn uh, or, or zero turn uh, mower is important because how else can you become king of the cul-de-sac. All right, I kid, I kid, but you know, we all wanna sit there on our on our big fancy shiny zero turn mowers with a cool drink in our hand, mowing that yard, making it look pristine. So how can we do it, but how can we do it on a budget, okay? Well, here's what we got. Uh, we're gonna start off weird. This is the bottom, this is the, the budget level. We're gonna work our way up. Uh, the Craftsman 42 inch, 20 horsepower V-twin zero turn lawnmower, okay? Now, almost all of these are gonna be in the 42 inch. Some are gonna be a little bit smaller. We got one that's bigger. They're almost all gonna have a, uh, uh, not have a welded deck. You're just, you're, you're, they're gonna be fabricated you know, almost entirely. That's just the way it, it goes at this price point, okay? The real difference is what kind of engine each one's gonna have. Um, and uh, so we're gonna take a look at some of the, the stuff here. We're looking at a 20 horsepower Kohler. Now it's in the 7,000 series, which is a good thing. Cause one thing that everyone agreed on was that the Kohler Courage engines were the Discourage engines and that we shouldn't, they should be avoided. Um, the, but the rest of the Kohler engine was, was fairly stable. The other ones we're gonna be seeing here, we'll probably see a Kawasaki in here. We're gonna see some Briggs and Stratton. Now I know Briggs, Briggs and Stratton, we've talked about it, not, not too great, right? Now what we found though is the smaller Briggs and Stratton ha are having real problems. The midsize and larger, the larger ones are, are much better, much better. The midsize, it's kind of hit or miss. So take that into consideration when you look at the engines that each of these have. Uh, I think you definitely want to look at the Kawasaki's and the Kohler's over the Briggs and Stratton, but the Briggs and Stratton's, I wouldn't rule them out completely, all right? Uh, they're mostly going to be in the $3,100 to $3,700 range. I am going to have a few exceptions in here at the end with a few twists, pot twists and stuff. So stay tuned till the end because I think you're going to be surprised or outraged. We'll see how it goes. Uh, adjustable lap bar, uh, powerful engine, uh, power 20 horsepower. 20 horsepower is decent on something like this. Uh, the rubber foot pad that I like the rubber foot pad, depending on where you are, uh, whether you like the steel or the rubber. I like the rubber one myself. Um, three-way adjustable lap bar we just talked about, increased traction control, durable 42-inch stamped steel deck there. Uh, cut and sew seat, it's got that nice kind of stitch kind of feeling, rather than just some of the, like the plastic molded seats, I like that. Uh, warranty is three-year uh, warranty and five-year on the frame. That's a nice one, okay? Some of these, they'll start talking about hours. Some of them, they won't mention hours. They didn't say anything about hours here. I'm gonna have links for each of these down below, and I'm gonna have a link to the engine that comes with it. This is the 7000 series KT715 from Kohler. You're looking at 20 horsepower, you're looking at 725 cc's. This is a solid made in the USA engine and I really like it. Um, now Troy built has one at the same price point, the Troy built Mustang. Here's something interesting. If you looked at this, you looked at this, you're like, those are really similar. And they are because they're made by the same company. They're made by what well, used to be MTD is now owned exclusively entirely by Stanley Black & Decker. These are comes out, come out of the same shop probably. Uh, if you look, they're, they're very, very remarkably similar. Uh, are they exactly the same? Uh, as far as the frame and stuff, probably. The seats are different. 
Some of the other stuff might be different, but um, my gosh, it is really remarkably similar. That said, they have different engines. Now this has got the EZT725. Again, this is a 725cc, but with the EFI, it's rated at 22 horsepower. EFI is electronic fuel injection. Here's the thing, <coughs> excuse me. If it's under warranty and take it to the warranty, you should be okay, but some places can't handle EFI. That requires extra, you know, higher end equipment that people can't get their hands on. And it could put you at the back of the list as some of the guys mentioned. We had a, a convo over uh, over the, all this, if I didn't mention that before, with a bunch of guys over at Mater's uh, uh, workbench there. And, and that was one of the things that kept coming up was that EFI is nice, but if you have a problem, it could, uh, it could be a while before you get your machine back, all right? Now, stepping up in price a little bit, we're looking at $3,300 for the Toro. Now, the Toro's got a 42-inch deck. Toro's an, an established name, well-known name in the industry. 15.5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton. It's in the EX series. It's the mid-level of the EX series. I'll give them that, but my gosh, 15.5 horsepower, considering we were looking at 20 and 22, we've stepped up, uh, was it $200 in price, and we've lost uh, a quarter of our horsepower? Oh man, it makes it hard to recommend the the time cutter. <laughs> time cutter is going to be a time waster. You're not going to get nearly the same kind of speed or cutting power out of something like that. Uh, it's a nice looking mower. It, again, it's a, a well known company. Three year unlimited hour warranty. That's nice. But I think the the real the one getting you right in the kneecaps is that is that horsepower on there. All right, now it, it could get worse. You could be riding on a snapper. All right, now the snapper here. This is, uh, this is one that you're going to have to find local distributors for. It's a national company. They sell it all over the U.S., but there's no big name that's carrying Snapper anymore, surprisingly enough. Uh, it's, got a 30, it's got 19 horsepower, which is getting back up there. And this is in a Briggs & Stratton and in that same motor series, the EX, but it's at the higher end of the EX series. And it's running a 36-inch deck for $33.65. A 12 gauge fabric, uh, steel fabricated cutting deck. I see nothing about this that makes me go, ooh, we should really consider a uh, snapper there. Three gallon capacity, that seems about average. Two to three gallon capacity is average for most of this group. Um, it's got an hour meter. It's got a cup holder. Oh boy, it's got a cup holder. They, I think they all have cup holders at this point. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not seeing anything. Six mile an hour forward, three mile an hour in reverse. Nothing about this is making me stand out and saying, hey, that justifies the price. Uh, even the Snapper Red, I can get it in both the other ones. Anyway, moving on. This is the third brother in the MTD series that they own that we're going to see in here, and that's Cub Cadet. And I'll say this, the build quality, to me, is a significant step up when you go to the Cub Cadet. Now, you're jumping up to $3,500, so you're jumping up $400. So there better be something. Now, what you're seeing here is you've got another Kohler engine, 22 horsepower in the 7th series. You're losing the EFI on this. I like that. And uh, you're looking at 725cc on this, three-year unlimited hour warranty on, on just the motor there. 42-inch uh, deck, twin blade system. Uh, this is just, I think, just head and shoulders above the level that you're seeing there with uh, either the Mustang or the, the Craftsman. Now, granted, it's in the Cub Cadet yellow, and you don't like that yellow. I certainly get it. It even has this kind of semi-roll cage kind of thing in the back. Uh, it's not a full roll cage, but at least it might offer a little, little bit of protection. Maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. It's a stamped deck type. So, again, you're not getting a, a welded deck on this. Uh, Three-gallon fuel capacity, that's nice. The 22 horsepower, that's nice. Again, I like. why would you go with something like the snapper when you get something like this. This has got a, a three-year warranty across the whole thing, bumper to bumper on it, uh, $3,500. And that's, that's the standard price. If you can hold off for a little bit, wait for it to come down a little bit, have a sale, that'd be a great one to, to snag right there. I think it'd be a, a good solid system to have. Now, let's say you're not a big fan of uh, Stanley Black & Decker. I know a lot of you aren't. I'm not a huge fan bearer of them myself. Uh, but John Deere, now where did I put that? Where do you go, John Deere? Here we go. There's the green and yellow. I grew up with John Deere, okay? I had relatives in the Quad Cities. John Deere is always close to my heart. Uh, that said, John Deere's really kind of giving themselves a couple black eyes with their customer service and their and the right to repair issues. And you can argue what you want, but we all know what they did. 
Now you can see the same issues uh, at this level. I, I really don't know about that, but we are looking at a 42 inch, 21.5 horsepower V-twin lawnmower at $3,500. It's looking pretty decent. I, I don't know the build construction on this doesn't jump out and go, oh my gosh, like the Cub Cadet, you look at the Cub Cadet and you're like, that thing looks robust. It looks prosumer, almost semi-commercial. This looks like your average lawn, you know, zero turn kind of thing. But that said, you know, it does have that green paint. So obviously it's better. That said, I, I say that said again, it does have, this is the, I think the only Kawasaki engine that we have in the group. Kawasaki, and I say, if somebody knows how to make a V-twin, it better be Kawasaki. 21.5 uh, horsepower here. Now, what's interesting is this model that was listed here in the parts diagram, this is what came up and it's no longer available directly from Kawasaki. Um, maybe they've got a stockpile, maybe they're about to move over to another one. Make sure when you're buying it, that it's gonna have the cow. That's the problem is John Deere lists their engines as John Deere branded. So they're buying engines from, from Kawasaki and they also buy from Briggs and Stratton. So make sure of what you get when you go to buy it, that, that somehow they haven't in, you know, the manufacturing supply line said, oh, we're, at this point we're switching over. So I'll, no matter what you see on here, what I link to, when you go to buy a motor, double check that what's in it is what's, you know, what you are expecting. Okay. But at $3,500, oh my gosh, I don't know. It's, uh, we talked about the size of the mower, 20 inch high back. That's nice. It mows up to seven miles per hour, hour with a 33 gallon fuel tank. Um, on a three year, 200 hour warranty. Now I'll be honest, you shouldn't hit 200 uh, hours in three years. That shouldn't be an issue, but just keep that in mind that there is an hour limit on this. So if you sit there and you idle it a bunch, that could become an issue for you. Now let's talk a couple about the, a couple of the orange solutions we have. First up is Aaron's. I like the Aaron stuff about everything I've seen from Aaron's I think has been pretty nice, pretty well built. This looks again, like a, you're looking at what's going to be what I call prosumer, almost in, almost verging on that commercial level here. And you're at $3,500. You're at 42 inch, 656 cc engine on it now the engine i found here is the exi series all right high performance uh and uh durability uh, again it's from briggs and stratton you're it's at the bottom range of that which some may say would be better because at the top range you're really trying to tweak the most you can get out of a product some at the bottom range is the sturdiest it's going to be depends on what your philosophy on that kind of thing is going to be uh as far as some of the specs on it we talked about it uh it, the deck material is steel. I don't know if they say whether it's, it doesn't seem like they come out and say whether it's stamped or anything else. Uh, it's now, what's interesting here is that it does six miles per hour rather than seven, like on the other one. It's a smaller CC engine. So that might not be that surprising. It's got a two gallon uh, gas tank there. That's a that's, you know, again, shy of what we saw three on most of the other ones there, or at least on the bigger ones. Um, and, uh, let's see, they're saying it's rated for an acre to an acre and a half. And I would, I'd kind of agree with that. This is going to work on the smaller size yards, unfortunately, because I, I like Aaron's. I think it's, it's got a, a great frame with, and it's well built, but doesn't seem like it's built for bigger yards. Now, if that's what you're looking for, for a hundred bucks more, I think there's a better deal out there. And that's the bad boy. Now, bad boy, this is over at Tractor Supply here. This, uh, this was at Ace, if I didn't mention it before, which is odd. Lowe's has them, Tractor Supply has them, Home Depot has them, Menards, nothing. Walmart even has, you can order stuff from Walmart. Uh, anyway, Harbor Freight, not yet. <laughs> anyway, the bad boy, check this out. 54 inch deck with a 22 horsepower uh, engine. It's rocking the Kohler KT725. This is rated as part of their commercial series in a consumer package. Not exactly sure what they mean. Again, it's a made in the USA engine. Um, I've always been impressed with any of the stuff I've seen from Bad Boy. Uh, honestly, it really struck me as some guys in a fab shop making their own stuff. And maybe that's how they got started, but it really looks like that. It looks like they kind of overbuild everything. And I like that. I, I, I'm all for that. $3,600 here. Uh, it's on sale though. This is one of the, I think there's two that are on sale coming down from $4,000. Normally you're $500 off on that. And I think this is definitely one of the two best buys in the group. All right. 
Uh, now, one of the takeaways is it only has a two-year warranty. Now, I, honestly, I think I'm not surprised to see that because the smaller businesses that make the higher-end products often seem to have less of a warranty. They figure our quality is good enough. People don't care as much about the warranty. Maybe they're right. Anyway, 725cc Kohler engine we talked about, heavy gauge, all steel, all welded frame, uh, the heaviest built deck in its class, seven gauge, all steel formed and welded with reinforced ed edges. That's serious, all right? This, this is, at this point, you were really getting into that, you know, almost value pro kind of market here when you're talking about this. Five gallon fuel capacity, Again, uh, the, the two-year limited warranty is the only thing that maybe be a consideration. But again, at that price, it's hard not to consider this one. All right. Now, the next one up, and I, if, I, if I didn't show the engine, there's the engine, 22 horsepower Kohler there, KT725. Again, a commercial engine in a consumer package made in the USA. Uh, and then next up, I kind of jumped, is the Husqvarna. And as you saw, it's coming with the commercial engine in the consumer package there. So, uh, and it's the KT745, which seems to be a step up from the 725. If you just go by numbers, but this is a 725. I think this one's a 725, 747. Well, there you go. It's the 747cc, 26 horsepower on this one. And this is the Husqvarna. Now, as you know, I'm kind of a fan bear for Husqvarna. A, I just love saying the name Husqvarna. B, uh, I love the chainsaws, I love the motorcycles, I uh, love the fact the company got started making firearms uh, like 100 years ago or something like that. 48 inch, so you're losing a little bit of size down from the bad boy. 26 horsepower, that, that's, that's astounding. Uh, clear cut deck uh, features fabricated 10 gauge steel construction. Again, we're going back to the fabricated deck. This is definitely in that prosumer grade. Uh, definitely better quality than a lot of the other ones, but again, it's a bolt together kind of system. So you're not going to see that same kind of rigidity and stuff you're going to see out of the bad boy. But again, uh, I mean, getting that 22, 26 horsepower engine in there, that's a nice, nice bump up there. Ideal for two to three acres. I fully agree with that. Three year bumper to bumper warranty, uh, promises worry-free ownership, LED lights. Uh, I'm trying to see if it says anything about, I don't think it said anything about how big the gas tank is is on this one. So maybe I missed that, but my guess is a three gallon on something like this. So we've really looked at these. And I think it really comes down to if you're, if you are looking for a bargain, bargain basement, I think you got to look at the Mustang 42 inch, 22 horsepower. But if you want, if you want the reliability, go with the Craftsman because you're not, you're not going to get that electronic fuel injection. Okay. But if you got some extra money to spend, it really comes down to the Husqvarna and the bad boy, but it's not really fair to compare them because this is a list, this is a sale price. And well, this is actually a sale price too, because this one I didn't tell you, if you click on it, add to cart there, it comes in at $3,600. Uh, so, well, $3,700. So it, it's up there. Between the two, I don't know, I might, I might go for the bad boy, but I really like the Husqvarna. Now that said, it would not be the den of tools if I didn't tick off all the gas loving fanboys and by throwing up the gas versus electric conversation. So let's do this, all right? Ryobi, okay? This is the first gen Ryobi zero turn coming in at four grand. You look at $3,700 on that. And this is not, uh, well, they say it's a sale price. It's always this price. Uh, $3,700, $300 more, you get a fully electric, just, just get in and go. No gas, no maintenance. Uh, that'll pay for itself pretty quick. Now, here's the issue. You can look at all these great specs. It's a 42 inch. Um, it's got all sorts of bells and whistles, buttons and screens and stuff. Uh, super low maintenance, three year warranty uh, from TTI, brushless tech. Uh, but if you look at this, nowhere does it say lithium ion because it's not. It uses lead acid batteries. I know, right? Well, a lot of people bought this the first year it came out, assumed they were lithium ion and they were just built in. You couldn't take them out and then just didn't pay attention to it, parked it for the winter, came back in the spring and only got half the runtime out of it. Well, what do you think happens when you ignore lead acid batteries? They're very needy. They do not like to be left alone. That said, what, all you had to do is put a conditioner on it, leave it over the winter. It'd been fine. Would have been fine. 
But I get it. I probably would not have expected it to be a lead acid. None of us expected it to be a lead acid. But that said, $239, that's not a ton of money for a replacement battery considering lithium ion prices. You get 100 amp hours out of this thing. Uh, it, it's something to consider. Definitely something to consider. But here's one. And I'm going to jump forward a bit because usually the Cadillac I talk about when I talk about electric riding uh, mowers here is the Ego. And it really is. It's a fab fabulous system. Some of the best, probably the best, I'm going to say it's the best battery tech out there when it comes to outdoor power equipment. 56 volt, 42 inch, rides like a dream, purrs like a kitten. You just get it in and go. Park it for the winter, take the batteries out, you're fine. You're just fine. And you can use those batteries and a bunch of other Ego outdoor power equipment. You can use it in your blower, you can use it in your trimmer, you can use it, uh, you know, for all sorts of stuff. They even have mods for the one wheels. You want to throw it on your one wheel or your e-bike and go zipping off all over the place. There are mods that let you do that. $5,000, this, this was always the go-to. That was it. That was the one you want to do. But I, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Greenworks, what have you done? 60 volt, 42 inch, Zero turn, comes with six 8-amp batteries. Again, can be used with all the other 60-volt outdoor power equipment from Greenworks. It's four grand. It, it, it has lots of great tech built into it. Uh, it 24 horsepower equivalent, eight miles an hour. It's faster than anything we just looked at. Maybe not, the, uh, maybe not that last one. Uh, the, the Husqvarna might be that faster, faster. Um, but uh, it's got an app. It'll find it in case somebody ever tries to steal it. Um, it's even got a, a little bed in the back so you can use it like a tractor and carry stuff around and, and, and do other kind of lawn stuff with it. And again, as I said, it's got this whole thing where you can use it with everything else. If you think about this, you're looking at four grand on this and you just go. That's $300 difference between that and the Husqvarna. And this isn't on sale, that's just the price. Free standard delivery to your tractor supply store when spending $29 or more. Well, you just spent $29. Now, if you want to extend a warranty on it, it's going to be a little bit much. Um, but as I said, it, it's, it's just a really compelling argument. As I said, electric isn't quite there when it comes to riding mowers like it is with the, um, uh, the push mowers. The push mowers, it's one or the other. Honestly, I think it's probably tipped over to the pack to the fact where for most people, 99% of the people out there for push mowers, you should be going electric. There's just no two ways about it. You can make all the arguments you want, but they just work. Um, $4,000. That, I mean, now here's the thing. If you click on one of their little things here, it says, well, compare $5,500. dollars This used to be more. It's come down in price. I don't know if they're clearing it out or what, but that is, that's a, there's an, it says it'll do 2.5 acres on a single charge. And what I've seen, I've seen some people who have this, they'll get, depending on it, an acre and a half to two acres. And then when it finally does get low, it doesn't just turn off. It turns it into limp mode so you can slowly get back to the garage or whatever and plug it back in. It doesn't just you know leave you stranded in the middle of a field. It's pretty nice, honestly. Now... I got to mention this because I talked about the other one. Ryobi just came out with their new 80 volt, uses lithium ion. It's got the joystick controller. It's super high tech, does all these great things. It's $5,000. It's fabulous. It's got a 30 inch deck for five grand. It, I know, I know your wife tells you size doesn't matter, but trust me, it does. Uh, five grand on that. For 30 inch, that I don't even know how they justify it. Now I said I'd throw in a, a in a, a little some bonus ones here at the end. So one of the things I looked at was how much I remember like when I was little, when I was 10, I'm in my mid 50s, when I was like 10 or so. I remember the 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 wealthier guys in the neighborhood on their little mowers and stuff, the ones that looked like this. And I thought, well, those were always an ex not that expensive really. Uh, and uh, you know, back then they, they weren't cheap, but these days they're super cheap. You see them all over the place. It's $1,900, apparently not as cheap as I thought they were. I was stunned to see that that's how much one of these little mowers go for, especially when you consider the fact that you can get the Walmart 80 volt with lithium ion. that will do two acres 
for three thousand dollars no it's not exactly break even but i mean it's not that far off because here's the thing gas tech isn't getting any better they aren't making leaps and bounds of of new exciting things coming out in gas but batteries are and I think it's just another couple years until lithium ion. I mean, they've already beat it. I mean, trimmers, blowers, hedgers, push lawnmowers, uh, walk behinds. They they self propelled. They all they already beat gas. It's only a matter of time until the standard brand new lithium ion or lith whatever the next battery tech is beats it. I don't know. Fight me down in the comments. I know how you guys are. Love to have a good argument. Let me know if you got any other input, stuff that people need to know. Put it down in the art in the arguments. Put it down in the comments and let us know what you think. Uh, while you're down there, don't forget to chomp the old like button. It really helps the old algorithm here. Anyway, you all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.